Good evening, Uganda, and welcome to On The Sports Show. My name is Patrick Kamara. My guest this evening is uh, Lord Mayor of Kampala, Elias Lukwago. And uh, Mr. Lord Mayor, I want to thank you so much for having honored our invitation. The eyes and the ears and, of Uganda and Kampala are right on you this evening. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. And uh, greetings to the viewers. Allow me also to extend my New Year greetings to your viewers here. It's my made an appearance this year, so it's a honor to me. Yeah, I'm looking forward to having a wonderful conversation. Mr. Lord Mayor, mm. you preside over a city with all respect that's dysfunctional. A city that sometimes with chaos. That's your city. You've made a judgment. <laughs> so you've passed a judgment so you want me to make a plea? <laughs> yes or no? <laughs> anyway, truth of the matter is, let's accept the reality. Kampala is not a functional city. That's for a fact. You can only bury your head in the sand and then assume that all is well. But it's not a city that is functional. And that is regrettable. It's not an indictment on me because I'm not responsible for this mess which has been there for all these years, for decades. It's largely an indictment on the sitting government um, because they have come up with all sorts of machinations to make Kampala uh, a little bit difficult to manage you know, when, and, when and transform a, into When you have city. a dysfunctional city mm. and you have a Lord Mayor who is not nearly a new Lord Mayor, who has been around for quite some time, somehow part of this uh, lack of the city being functional, it's in your docket, Mr. Mayor, for the city to work, for us to be proud of our city. True. So if it doesn't work, that's also on you. But if I have reasons to explain why the situation is as is, then you listen to me. Uh, because today the legal framework or the legal regime governing Kampala provide f provides for Kampala as uh, an agency, rather KCC as an agency of the central government. Essentially meaning that the central government gave a special status to the city in terms of um, governance, but as far as transformation of Kampala into a modern metropolis, a functional city, a vibrant, resilient, inclusive, attractive, and functional city, they have just given lip service. That's where the challenge is. So why do you keep, with all respect, offering yourself, going to the people of Kampala to ask for the mandate to lead when you know you can actually do almost nothing to change the status quo? No, you are getting it wrong. The role of the Lord Mayor is multifaceted. You are just looking at one perspective of the transformation agenda. But there is quite a, a lot that the Lord Mayor does, including offering political guidance. Actually, the primary obligation of the Lord Mayor, being the political head of the city, is to offer guidance on key salient issues. And I think I've done my best in that particular regard. Then if you have that given is that one, two, political guidance, why two, is it that we have not seen the people of Kampala who have been guided by you put pressure on the sitting government to do things right so that we can have a functional city? Of course you know the reason how people have been subdued, how this regime has suppressed the people. You know that, how it has oppressed them. But we, we, we keep on pushing, you see. Uh, uh, we have no any other country. This is our country. So you can't just throw your hands in the air and say, ah, we are just giving up. 
let's put everything to uh, the Almighty God for divine intervention. No. We have to continuously push, push, and push, and you know, push. Mr. Lord Mayor, I want to point to the majority of the people in Kampala mm. who are the urban poor, who are living in the informal uh, places of, of, of settlements, who sometimes have no running water, who sometimes their places is choking with garbage, who are the poor of the poor. How do you turn that mess into an opportunity so that they too, by the way, who voted in no big numbers to give you the, op the office that you have, so that they can, you know, enjoy living in Kampala? You see, it all boils down to one thing. The people you are talking about have no voice. You see, that's where now we have a problem. Their will has been hijacked by the sitting government. They are there in big numbers. They have their own grievances. They have ideas and aspirations. But the regime has opted to suppress and oppress them. So what you are talking about may not be feasible under the prevailing circumstances, turning what you are calling um, the mess into opportunities. It may not be easily achievable given the prevailing circumstances. But I'll tell you, uh, for the years I've been at State Hall, there is a quite a lot that we have done. Unfortunately, <laughs> you, you, in the media, it has not been given that spotlight it, it deserves, especially in terms of uh, accountability. Because, y yes, the central government, with that overbearing uh, influence on what happens in the city would like to make it possible for the elected leadership to have space to execute their mandate. But once we push back and also concentrate on so many other things like accountability, uh, checks and balances, ultimately there is some little improvement that you will see. Yes, you can see about the roads, for example. We pu we've tried our best to ensure that at least there is value for money you know, in certain aspects. C can I just okay. conclude mm -hmm. on this? Mm -hmm. uh, that's, by the way, one of the worst sectors in the city, the infrastructure roads. But at least with our intervention and uh, the assertiveness, there's quite a lot that you witness we, that is happening in the city. For example, I've said uh, the Kidipu Roads, we have Kampala Institutional and Infrastructure Development Project. We put much attention on that because this was the bank money. And that's why you see in the recent past, some few roads have been constructed. You've seen that stretcher road in Tinda Nakawa. You've seen Kavusu Bunamwaya, uh, Kashi Avenue big uh, widened. Bukoto Road, Lukulinanga uh, and Munyonyo, of course Motungo Ring Road, Kulambiro in Ring fact, Road. In fact, you, you, you're mentioning others. those roads. I was listening to you, <laughs> I think, addressing the council, <laughs> and you, you said we have almost over 2,011 kilometers of roads in Kampala. 2,110. 110? Yes. And only slightly over than 640 kilometers. 616 to be exact. Yes, 616 kilometers have been paved. But mm. even the, those that are paved, some of them are not even motorable. Yes. So I, I, I don't know. You can point out this, uh, these are the roads, which we have seen for sure, but, but that's just a, a tiny section of what should be done in, you your, own, in your own speech. You see... Kampala serves as uh, some sort of um, microcosm of what is happening in the entire country. So the, the, the situation you are describing here, you are explaining here, is what is happening in, in, in all the districts countrywide. The infrastructure is rotten. This is not unique to Kampala. 
The main concern maybe should be this is a capital city with a special status and it should be given priority. Almost 70% of Uganda's GDP is here. Oh, yes. And so that means this city deserves better. Mr. Lord Mayor, mm. you cannot be collecting, or Kampala is producing more than 2,500 tons of waste yes. every day. Yes. But only 1,400 is collected and taken to Kitezi. Yes. Say it. So in other words, the reminder of that West, sold West, is still in the community and people are choking with the garbage. That's and we have a Lord Mayor. It's one of our main concerns. And the reason we come out and raise these issues, sometimes you mistake that for lamentation. No, it isn't. It's asserting ourselves so that the regime can attend to those concerns. Because we have the Solid Waste Management Ordinance we made way back in 2000 and provided for a mechanism of dealing with, this, with the issues to do with um, solid waste. And uh, you can imagine for all this long, we have only one landfill, which it is. You can imagine. And uh, Maintenance alone is uh, extremely very expensive. You're running out of space in Kitezi, you understand? Yeah, it has to be retired. Be, 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 because now it's full to capacity. We have bought a new land, one, 135 kilometer, uh, uh, acres of land in at Dondu, next to the former president's residence, uh, Kaziwe. That is in Mokono? In Mokono. Okay. Uh, yeah, but... Um, we are having a debate and we draw a strategic plan and my view, which I'm glad was embraced by colleagues in the institution, was that instead of just creating a landfill, we should have a recycling plant there. Because this is uh, 20, 21st century. This peak and the dump, uh, that system is no longer tenable. We need to recycle the garbage. We don't need to reinvent wheels. What we are doing is not tenable at all. Just getting, actually, uh, 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 we divested ourselves of this responsibility largely because of want of enough trucks. And um, got franchise, I mean, uh, concessionaires. Uh, we allow the companies to do that. But the, equally, those companies don't have capacity. Uh, you'll find a company like a home clean, they'll just hire uh, a, this Diana, what, no, those small, small trucks. And um, they keep collecting from those who can afford it to pay. And that's why you see our capacity to collect uh, is below average. And that creates a problem for us. With our fleet as KCCA, it's very small. Right now we have roughly 14 trucks in operation. And they are also uh, mechanically not... You know, if, uh, you, if, okay. if a city really fails to collect her garbage mm. and dispose, of to, dispose it off in a manner uh, that is, uh, you know, desirable, Really, you have. We are putting efforts. You, you failed because we are putting trucks, efforts. Putting trucks in a city of almost four million people. Yeah, that's, that's a huge challenge. And, and, and when you only collect about fifty-six percent of your garbage, the rest where does it go? Uh, it's a one million dollar question. And it keeps it's slipping. An absurd and it keeps slipping. Yeah. It's no wonder some places that, that's of Kampala, the place is smelly. Part of it ends up in the drainage system and it clogs it up and the aggravates the floods, uh, the, the, this part, the crisis of floods. But as I've told you, we are putting much efforts, which are most likely going to yield some fruits because uh, in the financial year running, we appropriated the funds for purchase of at least 10 garbage trucks. And I'm, I'm glad that finally the central government remitted the money, and we are in the process of procuring those 10 garbage trucks to add on to the fleet. And we want to make it, uh, um, I mean, routine, a very financial year to purchase at least 
10 garbage trucks so that we achieve our target because um, we agreed in the strategic plan that uh, each parish should have its own garbage truck. And we have 99 parishes in Kampala. So the 14 so far we have can't serve the whole of Kampala. It's not possible. So can that garbage be used maybe in creating energy or something like that? Um, you know? Yeah, there is a lot that can be generated so from uh, this why garbage. Uh, you would have shown us in Kitezi something small so that when you go to Dundu, the mistakes that were made in Kitezi can be corrected in Dundu and then and, and Dundu you run efficiently. And by the way, also perhaps you need to sensitize us on even sorting our garbage because everything is just put in one place, it also becomes a problem. It's glass, it's metal, it's it clothes, it's everything. It's food. Everything is put together. That becomes a problem in, in sorting. That is the ideal. Possible. That's the ideal. But you have to first put in place a mechanism of collecting that garbage after it is sorted. Because we don't have that capacity of co ourselves collecting this garbage. That's why I've, I've told you it's being now done by uh, concessionaire companies or companies that were given concessions. So, and uh, theirs, it's just a hawking. So we want to first acquire those garbage trucks. And we know that they have a, a program, they, they, they have a mechanism on how they can reach out to the communities, especially in those slum areas and also to be able to provide, because under the Solid Waste Management Ordinance, we are duty-bound as KCC, including those concessionaires, to provide those beans. Uh, because it's the practice of having skips, these huge skips, uh, is outdated. So they were phased out. I'm sure you have not seen them in the no. city. Yeah, they were phased out. So we want self-loading compactors. This is the point I wanted to make. Self-loading compactors. So we, once you have those self-loading compactors, the communities will always know that in their own parish, that truck, that truck comes at a particular time, say 10 a.m. or 11. So the, the communities, the people will always be there waiting to load themselves the garbage onto the truck. And this compactor compresses what you have put there. So that's where uh, the sorting will make meaning, that you guide them, that no, 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 these plastics, please put here. This organic waste, this is the provision for it. And the rest, this is where you should put it. But it doesn't make sense for us to do the sorting at, at, at source then when it comes to fairing, you mixed it up. But isn't it easier hmm. this time around to make the government in power listen by just telling your boys, I hope I'm not giving you an idea of civic disobe <laughs> disobedience, mm -hmm. removing your service for only two days. Whoever is seated anywhere in the position of power and makes a decision for the country will listen. And the the entire city is engulfed yeah, in this stage. Look, I mean, I mean, yeah, they will listen. If they have not listened to you, they will. But then they can give you the tools you deserve for you to serve. Okay, I hope I'm not. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you know why? Because some people it's an advertising right, idea. Some, some things have a right yeah. to express themselves in another way. But what explains, mm. Mr. Lord Mayor, for us to be in a city? In a time like this, during the night and it is dark, yet we say we are a country producing surplus electricity, for heaven's sake. The streets of Kampala are dark, and that's dangerous. True. And you are a mayor. We deserve better. I'll tell you, we are not seated. I superintended over processes to come up with uh, some robust um, arrangement to light up Kampala. We reached out to a number of donor communities, development partners, uh, so to speak. And uh, AFD, 
that is the French development agency, intervened and said, no, we shall help you on, to, on this. We worked it out and said we shall have actually in the city smart poles. Smart poles which are multipurpose for, because it's, it, it looks absurd for, for telecommunication companies, electricity and all these other things, all of them electric, up their, 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 their poles and even when they are using these underground cables, you have these ones of sewer, uh, sewage, those ones for telecommunication companies again and what not. So we wanted to synchronize all that. If we were to have uh, poles, it must be multipurpose. It has to have air quality control systems. It must have street lights. It has the it, electricity and also those of telecommunication. That is what is enshrined in our master plan for lighting up the city. Unfortunately, there is red tape in the country and had to go through processes. For us at the authority level, we finalized everything and forwarded the blueprint to the central government. It's lying now on the table somewhere in the cabinet. And while the, uh, the African, uh, rather the French development agents, they are just waiting for this approval. And we roll out the program. Putting over so 20,000 smart Somebody is smart willing bombs. to give you money. Yes. Somebody is willing to make Kampala better. And then people within the system Let me tell you, are dragging their feet. I just don't even get it. Exactly. You see, um, this is what gives some of us frustrations. And I like to appeal to Ugandans to listen to some of these issues sometimes. It's important. Because you get lots of uh, uh, these frustrations. You see the opportunities are there. They are willing partners and you want th things to be done. But those who are in charge of the process at, a, at, at, at on the other side, just Let's be clear. Yeah. When around. you talk about those in charge of the process, uh, I mean, the money is coming from mouth, there's a willing donor, and there's a problem in our city, and somebody wants to sort it. Why would somebody say no? Uh, that's also what bothers me. Why should they say no? I can give you an example. Uh, because we, you can talk about, so for example, floods. Well, the banker uh, intervened because most of these primary drainage channels, uh, uh, as KCC, we don't have capacity to construct them. They are nine according to our uh, drainage master plan. We have a drainage master plan. Like I've told you, you have that street lighting master plan, which has to be implemented in conjunction with Africa, I mean, with the FD. But now, if the drainage master plan, the partnership, has always been with the World Bank. And we picked out those major drainage channels, Rubiji, Nakamiro, Nachivubo, uh, Chinawataka, Narubaga, uh, Narukorongo, uh, Mayanja, and, and a couple of others. There are nine in total. And he said, if we were to do away with the floods in Kampala, we must fix these drainage channels. And the arrangement we entered with the World Bank was that they will provide funds for the construction of it. But when it comes to the right, uh, uh, I mean, to access the, 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 those corridors, that means the RAP costs, the RAP costs, the resettlement plan uh, costs, Compe compensation, and compensation the location, and so on and so forth. It's the obligation of the country, of the regime here. And you find in most of these cases they have failed and the funds are recalled back. But I have seen some work going uh, on around like Luvigi, which has been going on forever. Luvigi and, uh, yeah, and, Luvigi and, way, and in Nakamiro, yes. Yes, I've seen some work going on in Nakamiro and Luvigi, <laughs> but then, I mean, it has taken f a long time. Now this is incompetence of the company, inefficiency rather of that Chinese company that was given the contract. The, according but to the bills of court, you are political quotidian. supervisors of Kampala yeah. City. But, but, but do you, know you are the Lord Mayor, sir. But do you know what we are doing? Even today in the council, when I was giving the New Year address, more or less like a state of the state address, I explained all this. And I invited the colleagues to support the idea 
of rescinding these contracts. The deadline for finishing, for example, BG, was November last year. Nakamiro was August last year. And KIDP was supposed to close around November. KIDP 2. That's Kampala Institution and Infrastructure Development. So that World Bank goes into other ventures. Now we had again to go back, myself sitting with the World Bank Mission to make a pleas for extension and so on and so forth. But you can imagine within Nakamiro, they are just at 12% of the construction, 12%. With the Rubiji, it's just 22%. Yet they were supposed to complete the civil works by August and November, respectively, last year. So, why, yes, colleagues, why should we be lenient like this? Because we are being turned into punching bags, receiving barrage of attack like from people like you. You are now representing the, the public. Yes, we are on the receiving end of these attacks when somebody because is smiling Mr. all Mr. the Lord way to the bank. We ask ourselves, for how long are we, be, are we going to find ourselves, you know, stuck on the streets of Kampala, on the roads of Kampala, because it has rained and the clock tower and other places have flooded and we can't move. Or even, I've actually even seen people disappear, walk and step on an open manhole and disappear. And somebody's life ends like that. It's regrettable, I must say. Very, very unfortunate. But as I've told you, let's press the, 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 I mean, the responsibility where it should be. You get it? Let me give you this holistic picture. We have a strategic plan for five years, and we have made some ambitious commitment that by 2025, ahead of actually the deadline for Agenda 2030, that is the SDGs, that by 2025, Kampala should be a functional city, should be one a functional, inclusive, livable, attractive, and resilient city. Of course, uh, a sustainable one. That's a very ambitious program. And our target was that, or rather the projection, that the, if we were to achieve that dream, mm -hmm. the investment we need in the region of two billion US dollars. Just two billion US dollars. I was in comparative terms. You're talking, about, you're talking about almost like seven trillion Uganda shillings. Yes. I'm talking about transformation of the city into a modern metropolis. It's not a simple job. It calls for heavy investment. Now, and these are five years I'm talking about. If you break it down to financial years, it's 1.5 roughly, 1.5 trillion. And when we were launching it last year, no, uh, before COVID, the then Prime Minister Ruakano Gonda made a commitment and said that will be av uh, achievable. But as we talk right now, we are soon getting the second budget called Satura. And the Ida and the team were in parliament today to defend our budget. They gave us the first budget called Satura, uh, indicating that we should commence now the budget framework process. And we embarked on it, the, the rolling out essentially the budget calendar. And you know the MTF ceiling they put there 441 billion Uganda shillings. When you needed something like 1.5 trigger. 1.5 trillion is the minimum hold on that to we needed. Hold on to your point, Mr. Lord Mayor, because we're going to take a break. And on the spot, we'll be right back. Welcome back. You're watching On the Spot. My name is Patrick Amar. My guest tonight is the Lord Mayor of Kampala, Elia Sirukwago. You know, Mr. Lord Mayor, mm. there's one thing that really gets to my nerves. Driving or walking in downtown Kampala, the mess that we see, the disregard of traffic rules, the impunity on our streets, it's 
a jungle down there, Mr. Lord Mayor. The border borders will no longer follow the rules. The minister and all other officers, everybody has a siren in their car. They're driving on the right. What is going on for heaven's sake? How can we let Kampala go to the dogs to that extent? I can understand all of us who want to earn a living. We are fighting to bring bread on the table. But can't we just follow the rules? Just the rules? Can somebody enforce that? <laughs> you see, you are like a doctor who would jump into a treatment plan, having a treatment plan without doing the diagnosis. You will, you will complicate and aggravate the matter. And indeed, Ugandans are, to, are good at that. Instead of diagnosing the source, the root cause of this, they are quick to say politicians are responsible for that because they want votes. That's why they don't want vendors evicted, but the borders just away. Matatu is also uh, behaving the way they are behaving. And that, thing, that is being simplistic. The, and by the way, the, I, the and by the, and by the way, I am not against the border, border, a matatu or vendor. I am against that person who disregards the rules. You see, just just follow the rule and do your thing. <laughs> I'll give you an example. Uh, you have a muzigo in Kampala, for example. Many of these muzigos in Kampala. Um, you find some people sleeping in what would be a sitting room. Right now, you, we're on TV. There are those who may be watching you from a sitting room, a living room, but uh, at the same time, that's where their bed is. And under, under normal circumstances, the ideal situation would be everybody should enjoy the luxury of having their bedrooms. But the conditions have forced them to sleep in a place which is called a living room. And actually, they could be inconveniencing. Uh, they could be just sleeping there right now. And others are watching TV right now. That but, is... But, Mr. Lord, I, I wanted how, to explain... How is that related to, exactly. to, to, to disregarding the rules on the streets of Kampala? Because I can rules, understand this what if I'm somebody you. is not able... If you're not able to have a living room and have a, uh, uh, and have a sitting Maybe. room, I can understand that. Or even I can relate to that. But how about when you drive mm. on the street? You are a minister and you're driving, on the, you know, you're driving on the right? Do you know the point I wanted to make? I, you are no, a police, the point I you wanted are a police to make. commander and, 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 and you're driving on the you right? You see, the point I wanted to make, I can sum it up okay. just mm -hmm. in one adage. This is dictum in law. Necessity knows no law. Necessity knows no law. And that is what is happening right now in Kampala. Because we started on that note that Kampala is not a functional city. But what you want to see are systems which you will find in a functional city. Kampala is not a functional city. And allow me dig deep into that. Why is it that it's not a fact? It has suffered perpetual neglect by the central government for the last 35 years they have been in the power. So these problems have been piling up. They didn't start yesterday. They have not just happened overnight. They have been piling up and piling up, incrementally, incrementally. Now we are almost on a tipping point. We are almost there on the tipping point. The influx of so many people, because the agricultural sector is no longer tenable for many of these youth. The economy in the countryside is in limbo. So all people are running to the city. And when they come here, they cannot get integrated in a structured economy because that structure, the economy is very narrow. It can't absorb all of them. Two, these are people with no skills. Where do they end up? Street vending, border border, taxis, and so on and so forth. 
that is the informal sector you are talking about. Yes, but 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 so Mr. I can Mr. only Mr. sum Mr. it up Lord in Ma my Mr. language. Mr. Lord Mayor, mm. even the so-called Ugandan Kampala elite, people in the middle class, with a good job, or even with the with, with, with the car and maybe with the driver and everything, even them cannot follow. In fact, they have fallen so short than even the poor in disregarding the rules and making our Kampala look like a messy place. And, and yet we have uh, people who are supposed to, <laughs> to enforce these regulations and rules. And they look on. I don't, I don't blame them, Mr. Lord Mayor, because they are overwhelmed. The numbers, everybody is... This is exactly... The numbers are just too big. This is the world. The policeman has not... It, he, he can do anything. Ah, this is what I'm saying, that they are overwhelmed. And uh, I've seen it uh, even in seven being inconvenienced and himself actually inconveniencing the people. If he is to cross up to Nakasero and he comes from those ends of Entebbe, uh, an hour before he reaches the state center, they will block off all the vehicles coming in. Because they know once he's caught up in the maze, in that gridlock, anything can happen. So they have to clear all the roads for him to be able to cross smoothly to state road in Nakasero. So, yet under normal circumstances, he should also be, of course he enjoys those privileges, but not to that extent which causes, because the, the confusion is at a tipping point, this is what I'm telling you. So what, so what is your proposition on how we can end this? Oh, because, yes, because, that's a good because, question. Because this is, this, that's a good question. this is chaos. This is a good question. In my first term, we realized all this and said, hey, gentlemen, what do we do and ladies? Let's get consultants to do a study for us and to get to understand, is it possible to transform Kampala into a functional city or it's a city which has gone to the dogs? Those were the questions put to the consultants. We picked those people, some of the most qualified people in spatial planning from Israel and South Africa. They presented to us in June 2012. A huge report, over 500 pages. What? Over 500 pages. And I still have that document. So when it was presented to us, they said, you need to do A, B, C, D if you are to redeem Kampala. And they said, the beauty you have, Kampala enjoys what they described as the best natural environment. You know Kampala is said to be a city of hills. They were originally six, now seven, or, and more. It, you, it's there to find a landscape, a terrain, where you have these hills on the shore of a huge water body like Lake Victoria. It's rare, but that's Kampala for you. And they said, we must do our best to develop Kampala as a lakefront city, a lakefront city. Those were the suggestions there, and so many other things. They said this linear development is not sustainable. You move from Kampala up to Entebbe, do you find the streets, uh, one, two, three streets away from the main road? Never. Never. It's linear development. It's not, actually, on, almost on all these trunk roads, Masaka Road, Jinja Road, it's just linear. Mitiana Road. For you to cross, for example, if you are coming from Mitiana and you are going to Masaka, why should you first come to Busega and then cross to Chengera? Put it differently. There should be a road in Maokota there. And a network of roads should be everywhere. And uh, we are just starting on it. And it's not being done at the pace I uh, hoping, we I should like because, to see a road because from Kasenge going through Budo exactly, and, and going to Mas exactly. Masaka Road. Ask yourself, how long has it taken to construct the Northern Bypass? How long? Now we want the Southern Bypass to have that circular road. And it is taking ages. Even but these, if, these but expressways if you put, and so If you so do forth. all those things, mm. but we, the residents of Kampala, are indisciplined like we are right now. Yes, yes, we are. I see a lot of indiscipline you on see? the road. You see, 
In fact, should you even, Mr. Lord Mayor, maybe scratch somebody, the road rage that you'll see, it can even result into murder. No, in Kampala. You, you see, what you call in this spring is a culture that has been evolving over the years. And it has become a norm in Kampala. Somebody will not feel outraged to see you, for example, vending cabbages uh, around the Bank of Uganda. They won't be surprised. Because it's a culture that has been evolving over the years. I've told you where the Malay is. That we failed to, board, to broaden the structure of the economy. To be able to absorb these people. Let me tell you. I think uh, uh, in a, uh, I don't recall the period. You, you, you used to have Mokwano, for example. Mm -hmm. So many unskilled people would go to Mokwano, for example. You have been to Mokwano Road. Mm -hmm. They would flock at that place, you'd see them, women, youth, going there to work in that factory just to get, f uh, I mean, packing, packing soap and whatnot. Factory should, workers. If, uh, yes. They should also be able to do packing in the in the garment industry, they should be in the, uh, pack, uh, doing all sorts of things. In, in say, for example, uh, so you're taking this companies there's making there's groceries, problem in bakeries, and whatnot. No, I'm talking about structured economy that can give people jobs, as opposed to being in the informal sector. I'll use my language, ne kolera jange. I don't know how I can translate by that. The way, by the I, way, Mr. Uh, Lord Mayor, I don't, want, I, don't want, city. I don't want even to lump the indisciplinary sea. No, listen, on, I was on, saying. On, 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 uh, on the, the indigents, it is even the well to do, the guys who have gone to school, who are actually more indisciplined on the road, people who have jobs. Mm. In fact, today, I even took pictures of some people who were just driving on the right. You see, yes, there could it, be some cases of indiscipline. But I don't think that is the biggest problem. The biggest problem I've told you, like for example, they are all struggling to fit within the 616 kilometers out of 2,110 kilometers of the entire road network in Kampala. They are all running away from those mad places. Looking for tarmac. Looking for tarmac. Tarmac in some cases that is not even motorable. It's not motorable, full of potholes. Somebody will be navigating around the pothole, and along the way they find themselves on the walkway. That can also happen. They are dodging a manhole and ending up breaching the regulations we are talking about. So to make a company a functional city, it has to be a deliberate move. Listen, when I mentioned two trillion, or rather seven trillion, the two billion US dollars. You appeared uh, perplexed. <laughs> but I was telling you in comparative terms. Johannesburg, their annual budget is 4.5 billion US dollars. It doubles our five year development budget. You can imagine. It doubles the budget we are talking about. This is just peanuts. When it comes to the... Yeah, it's a big economy. So South Africa is a big economy. Exactly, I understand. That's for sure. Yes, it is. Just it's an like, old city that has been just there. Just like they, they, Egypt, they, Cairo, yes. and so on. But, but these are the, so, some of the African cities we admire. You get it. But how, how have they done it? Kenya, for example, okay, let's not go very far. Kenya, for example, their budget is roughly 400 uh, million US dollars. But ours, I've told you, the 441... Uh, billion is just roughly slightly above a hundred million US dollars. A hundred million. Which city can you develop on a hundred million US dollars? Just a hundred million. Even them in Kenya, they are four, four times, probably they are four or five times bigger than us in terms of the economic power, the economic muscle. But I just want to move. Who is this Nigerian rich man? Because that's po pocket change. Dangote. Dangote. Mm -hmm. For Dangote, <laughs> that is just pocket change. So, let me tell you this. There is a lot of money squandered. Right now, 
Mr. Museven spe is spending 250 billion to construct roads in DRC. He has constructed schools in, in, in TZ. And the budget they presented, this is the budget season now in Parliament. That's what they are considering. Do you know how much they want just to renovate State House and TV? They talked of 37 billion. And in total, they want actually roughly 400 billion for State House alone. The whole of Kampala with the 5 million people cannot be... Uh, actually, you want to give that same amount you are giving to the whole of Kampala with the, 400, uh, with the 5 million people. Does it, really, does it really add up? That's a hard one. It, it doesn't make sense. So it's something okay. that we don't get our priorities right. And I've told you, you are decrying this, you are decrying this mess right now. But I just want to, pe to paint a picture, a gloomy one for you. And I've presented it to colleagues in the council. If we don't make quick intervention, quick interventions, in five years to come, Kampala is going to be a market. Forget about these few excited people like Ike Hood, who are hoping from one place to another that they are, that this is their RCC, that they are crea creating trade order, they are beating up street vendors. That's not sustainable. How we should get our priorities right? Those people who can't be in the structured economy, the urban poor, who are the majority, need to have common user facilities. That's how organized cities have done it. But today, all the markets, including the biggest market like St. Valley, have been alienated and sold off. Nakasero market sold off. Chiseka market sold off. Instead of developing them as common user facilities for the urban poor. Usafi, they are singing Usafi, Usafi. Usafi cannot accommodate all these people. For even sake, it's not even a market, so to speak. I don't even see, it looks, looks like the vendors don't <laughs> like going to Usafi. You see, you've seen these markets uh, like Mpanga Market. In Fort Porto. In Fort Porto. Central Market in Jinja. You've seen the one in Soroti. You've seen Lira, Arua. Those were markets con con constructed under the multiple program. Including Wandega, I suppose. Yes, Wandega is one of them. But the, for the rest of the cities, these are modern markets and were constructed in strategic locations. But for our case in Kampala, they took a facility which ordinarily should be elsewhere. And that's why, that's why they accuse us of being anti development. We protested, personally, I'm one of the people who protested the construction of Wandeke. Because Wandeke market is a place for wannabes, for lecturers, and uh, you remember the case of Mudol and Chidubuka, mm -hmm. and uh, who were uh, bombed from that. Makerere students coming there to eat chicken, to booze, to wine and dine, to, it's like a Kavaragala. It's a place for, for wannabes. But if you want a market, Kalerwe is there. I told them, why don't we construct it at Kalerwe? Why don't, you, why don't we construct one uh, on, on each and every major trunk road, in, like uh, the, the, the gateway towns to the city? We get one in each and every division. A huge one. A huge one, like these malls you are constructing. Mm -hmm. They have money to construct malls. This arena you see now, but also Wait a minute, just let me ask you. This, this arena, what is it called in Zambia, which used to be police land? The, the one which has just opened. Yeah. Arena Mall. Who owns it? Who owns it? Why should that be a concern? Oh, you yes. Want it, it, oh, yes, it is important. Uh, so? It is important. Because I know that this mall, for example, in is, listen, is it, the, the mall is, in, is, in is Chevando. The issue is it in the wrong place? Is that what it, the issue is? That not the issue? only that. Mm -hmm. The is mall, it, the mall in the on public land? The mall, uh, this is the point I was okay. wanting to make. It is on public land, but public, private property. How can you have a private property in private land? And we are digging deep to get to know the source of funds. Like the case is PPP. And which PPP? <laughs> which PPP? Have you, be, have you been to this? Uh, shopping mall in Chebando, that Akamwesi, a a mm -hmm. and you had the the the, the fracas in the Harabaru in the Parliament about 
one individual accessing funds from UDB to construct a private mall? Can't we get money from UDB and construct markets for the people in Kampala? And you the elites, you are just there shouting, beat up those people, those Rukwagos, they are hopeless, they are supporting impunity. When the Akamwes is accessing public funds and constructing private malls, when somebody is taking public land here in Zambia and constructing a private property... Is an, isn't a private individual having a right to get a loan from Uganda Development do, Bank? Do we have obligation to, pri to plan for private individuals? That I money, for money in the Uganda Development Bank is supposed also to support the business people. If not individuals. Business, if they have a business It's idea. not the reason it was, it was created. UDB has never been a facility for particular individuals like you, Kamara, and myself. If Kamara, you want a loan, you want money, go to a commercial bank. You and mortgage your asset there. So you get Mr. it. Mr. Go Lord, to a commercial Mr. bank. Mr. Lord Mayor, the issues of Kampala are many. For example, navigating Kampala is almost impossible. I'm wondering how, if people are stuck and they have, they have, they have an emergency, how does the fire engine even reach them? You know? Because the roads are not named, the plots are not there. In some cases, the roads are very narrow. No, how naming, do you rescue people naming when there's a problem? Naming you have tried with that Kamuvi, statewide address model. We have tried, and I'm sure if you, 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 you are taking a survey, you, you, you can always download some app to help you with the, on, on, to go into our GIS system. It is still in its infancy, yet to be developed to modern standards. But at least somehow, you, you, you can use it. It will not tell you uh, if you put in that TikTok, uh, no talk talk, not TikTok, <laughs> something, it's called the tuk -tuk or something, in the GIS. It will not tell you, you move 100 kilometers, you will find a jackfruit tree, you turn left. No, 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 it will not do that. At least it has some element of modernity. But that is but also the, out but, of a but struggle. But they're working in an area sometimes that cannot be integrated with modernity. Uh, that's where, again, we have a challenge. Like I've told you, even installing air quality monitoring systems here has been a tug of war, telling government how important it is to assess the quality of air we breathe in, we inhale. Something which and is I've obvious. I've actually been watching we have just installed international the media. Every mm -hmm. time they are, now they are giving air quality, uh, like they are giving weather updates. <laughs> and, and, Kam and Kampala is around four there. In, in the particulate matter of the air we breathe is so high mm -hmm. in some cases. And, and perhaps we do not know, but we are living in... No, yes, we are breathing, these emissions we are talking about. We are about. breathing polluted air. Every home... Air core is from Akira University... He's been giving us those updates. Yeah, we are saying this. We are yet, because we have the Climate Change Action Plan, we launched it together with the, the, Euro the European Union. The ambassador was here, we launched it in 2016, and we embarked on the process of implementing the same. We got concerned that at that time, to get this data about air quality in Kampala, we had to kneel before the U.S. Embassy. Because for them, they, put, they, they installed it for their own purpose. And the Makere University Pub, School of Public Health for purposes of studies. And those are the two we had. But right now, we, are, we have extended even to some schools and those public in the parks and whatnot. But the statistics we are getting, the data we are getting, is quite horrible. These emissions are too much. Kampala is highly motorized. Highly motorized. We have over 200,000 border borders. And what comes to the mind, I'm sorry, I may use very unpalatable language, minds of these uh, charlatans, the simple-minded ones, just chase them. Forgetting that the problem does not begin with the border borders. It begins with you who are the planners. That is the central government. Failing to create mass public transport. Because you don't need rocket science. You just, just a minute. You don't need rocket science to understand why you have all these border borders here. It's because you, we don't have a mass public transport system. What is so difficult for us to have metros here? We have it in our strategic plans. Mr. Museven, if you may be watching, 
is, you think it's so difficult to put metros here? Yet in the, in the old days we used to have Kayora. I would jump in you know, a Kayora here at the railway grounds well, and it takes me all the way to you came up, you, As Kampala City, you came out with an idea of a non motorized transport corridor mm. from Namirembe Road down to Nakivubo. Mm. It was a beauty at the beginning to walk there because I've used it and enjoyed it. In fact, the city in Kampala in downtown is much cleaner now to walk there. But why can't at least the NMTC mm -hmm. remain NMTC, non-motorized transport corridor? I am walking there, but I have somebody is even trying you to know, bring in a vehicle. The person who is extremely passionate about that is the chairperson of the National Physical Planning Board and the lecturer at Makere University, Madame Ungavirano. Yes. Oh, Amanda Ungavirano. Amanda Ungavirano. Oh, she wanted that done yesterday, the other day, and what not. And we had a huge debate with many of the, our colleagues. In but the, I think it is a good idea. Personally, I support non-motorized transport. I support it 100%. Then let them I, keep it non-motorized. But, but look, look. Problems always come at implementation stage. I told the colleagues, we are piloting non-motorized transport. We are introducing <coughs> an idea. You need buy-ins. And when you do buy-ins, the doors shouldn't be too much. Then they went into the commercial hub, the center of commerce in Kampala. That is Chikubo, uh, Benich Wanuka Street, Irumu Street, and what? I told them, honestly speaking, that is not the best location. But let's, but because, let's pilot because that it. place was also almost dead. You see, what made it dead? Mr. Lord Mayor, sometimes maybe you do not, what made it you do dead? not know that for us we walk downtown. What made it dead? It, it, uh, there is some, at least, uh, you know, a semblance of order, despite of people trying to abuse the whole thing. It's, you, you are better off now walking in a mirror bed. I even asked... The, tra the traders in downtown yeah. around uh, those uh, shopping malls, whether maybe the lack of vehicles going there has disrupted their business. See, and they said, no uh, way. Uh, they're, actually, they're actually selling more and they're less stressed because there's some order. You see, I, I, I don't dispute that. But that should have been in, a, in another phase. But at the time of piloting a particular idea, you start in areas with the less inconveniences. We would have started, my proposal was, let's start with the Parliament Avenue. You, the Kamaras, who want to adopt this European culture of eating as you walk, sipping away at ice cream, chewing chocolate, and uh, hugging one another as you walk in your shorts and whatnot, you use that corridor. So it begins from there. Say Parliament Avenue, Chimathi Avenue, or Buganda Road, or any other road up there, up scale Kampala. Then, once people have started to embrace it, you roll it down. But you started in that area, where actually you don't even have green. Let me tell you this. You will stand at the old taxi park. You don't have even a single tree there. In an motorized corridor must be having a green cover. But the green cover a should have been cover there. A green cover, like be, the Royal Mairo, Kavaka. Uh, it should have been there because the trees had been planted if people were not abusing it. In fact, we're addressing the council today. You actually talked about uh, having an urban forest that you want, oh, yes. you want to plant a I'm forest. I'm so passionate about it. I wonder where it. you're going to put your forest, sir. Huh? Uh, you wonder where it's going to be put? The idea is on table. The rest, it's about implementation. I'll tell you this. It's an inevitability. Because it, there is no way, let me tell you, you are going to deal with this issue mm -hmm. of climate change. Our target is reducing the emissions to 22% from the business as usual scenario. That is our target by, uh, uh, by 2030. And we did a tree audit in Kampala here and discovered that actually we are doing badly in terms of tree density. We started with the precinct of Makerere. We came to Morago and Kororo. Kororo where there is some semblance of order and some green cover. And did a tree audit. It indicated that we have 328 species. But of course, 
majority of them are the, the like different said, types of trees different types okay. of trees the indigenous ones are very few less than 30 others are exotic but we said now we need to have a, a, a forest in the Kampala where we can showcase at least the indigenous trees and also because it's multi-purpose it can absorb the emissions we are uh, we, 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 we have in the Kampala uh, these greenhouse emissions now <laughs> and also we have a program of planting one million trees we are going to launch it one million trees so in we, Kampala yes in Kampala because we discovered we have three to five trees per acre that is the tree density yet our target should be roughly 20 trees per acre but right now you have roughly five trees per acre and that is the area where you find some green cover so we enacted the green cover ordinance a green infrastructure ordinance and there are so many scalable deliverables that we want to achieve urban forest is one of them i must tell you we have already tasked the district land board okay to okay. give us to allocate us land at least three to five acres within kampala here and i'm quite optimistic and confident we shall achieve that target so that we plant that forest. Mwagai, uh, Professor, who is, what's the name of that woman in Kenya oh, okay. who, who, no, who won a Nobel Prize? Have you visited that forest in Nairobi? Haven't you seen that central forest in New York? The, uh, the late Wangai. Wangai mm. for, for Kenya. Mm -hmm. Oh, I just love that forest in Kenya. She defeated all the forces, the, uh, the vicious forces that did not care about the environment. So my commitment as the Lord Mayor, we must make Kampara green. Hold on to your point, Mr. Lord Mayor, because you're going to take a break. And when we come back, I'll open the lines so that you too, if you're a resident of Kampala, you can tell us what you think. If you have a question, the Lord Mayor is here, he'll respond to your question but please keep it short and precise so that maybe we can get two or three uh, questions from you and should you be in that in disagreement with me or the lord mayor that's okay that's the nature of debate but please disagree with respect we'll be right back Welcome back. You're watching On The Spot. My name is Patrick Amara. My guest tonight is the Lord Mayor of Kampala, Area Shirukwago. You know, there's one thing I've also noticed mm. is uh, the enforcement officers from KCCA, when they go down there and meet the vendors, there's always chaos. Using a lot of brute force on vendors who have just come to earn a living on the streets. In fact, about a few days back, there was actually a real clash between the enforcement group and the vendors. We can't live like this. This is what I've told you. These, these skirmishes between the vendors and the law enforcement team are not necessary at all because they are dealing with the symptoms rather than addressing the cause. And that's the reason even when they push them away, uh, they, 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 yes, they can get scattered for a day or two, but then there is a resurgence and we go back to square one the circle becomes a full again so for us we want to do it in a holistic manner starting with first and foremost planning we have legal instruments in the place the 1969 trade licensing act we have the street street vendors bylaws street hawking bylaws and trade ordinance they will provide if a tool of regulation that is a license. Mm -hmm. License. That's what it's provided for. Let me let me that you gazette particular places, give licenses and have them organized. Basically that's what we should be doing. But you get disturbed by people who are educated. And you you think these are very simple things to understand. That in a city of Nekolera Jiang. You cannot have the order you want. It's like that Muzig I've told you. 
where you have produced so many children when you don't have bedrooms. And we're saying the rules are that one should not sleep in the, in the, in the sitting room, in the living room. But you don't have bedrooms. Definitely, they will sleep there. So, so we must me, construct me, markets for them. Let, let me give you some questions coming in. Some of them are coming on my phone. And by the way, the, the lines are open, so now you can uh, call and, and talk to the mayor of the Lord Mayor of Kampala. Uh, somebody is asking us, Lord Mayor, you can't lament about being oppressed by the regime. You must focus on service delivery. We want an organized city with efficient public transport, affordable housing through lobbying for policy adjustments. Mr. Lukwago stop surviving on opposition antics against the regime and dialogue with them for service delivery. A 24-hour working city would improve the livelihood of the poor urban dwellers. Um, I have another one here uh, from my friend Philip Rucci who said, thank you for the show, Patrick. Let the Lord Mayor give us answers. We are tired of the mess in the city. So if Kampala is not a functional city, do you propose we create a new city? I should ask you that, he says. And uh, Victor is asking, what about the Busega market? I mean, that maybe we should be having uh, other places, for example, I, I had a question I want to ask about the, the, the old tax pack that's supposed to be handed back to the people, but I understand there are still wrangles. How about having, you know, parks in the satellite areas so that you did congest Kampala? Well, that requires money. Those gateway city towns, the satellite parks, that's all in our plans, including parking towers. Which city where you have all private cars parked by the roadside? Mm -hmm. Which city? But here in Kampala, we create parking slots. Kampala, you come to office along the Diamond Trust building there, work, uh, workers' house, and so you park by the roadside 24 hours, I mean 12 hours. No, 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 that's not sustainable. Kampala is a city with no single parking tower where you have to pay, you have to go and park your vehicle, you enter your office, don't park by the roadside. That is very simple. The gentleman talking about Busega, it's at 98%. It ought to have been opened last year, but a few things need to be fixed. And also that road, because we have this, uh, this fund we got from Africa Development Bank to construct some roads. So we want to tarmac that stretch. It's called the Mubende, old Mubende Road, from Chivumbiro up to Busega Junction, so that that market is accessible. And from that fund, again, we're going to construct Salama Road, we are going to construct Sentema Road. We are going to construct Suna Road in Endeavor and a couple of others. So those people who are talking about Lamente, for the last one hour, I think I've been giving you a picture, the 360 degree mm -hmm, picture mm -hmm. of what is happening in Kampala. And somebody is here talking about, <laughs> you know, uh, uh, th those are the charlatans I've been talking about. That is stop lamenting, you want you to fix the seat and so on and so forth. I hope do you I, also understand do, do, that do yeah, I, do there's I, a culture of violence that is creeping up I, in our city. I know, of course, certainly it is even uh, likely to worsen to, 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 because with all this attitude we are having. Those people who are saying, yes, we want a clean city, beat up those people and they go away. That's violence you are advocating for. And instead of, you know, pushing a government who are squandering our money, to remit it to cases, to construct markets for these people. Because I don't, I don't know people understand someone. Because for the last one hour, I've been talking about common user facilities so that we can have an organized city. That we have markets where these vendors, we construct markets where the vendors can work from. You, right. you, we, 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 let Mr. Seven also sign the landlord tenant law so that we regulate rent tariffs. So th th these commercial models to be affordable. You cannot tell somebody with the capital of 50,000 to go into a mall where rent is 7 million. Anyway, our, our time is almost our up. Our time is up. <laughs> but you are talking about the old taxi. I would have wanted to ask about the poor state of the hospital health facilities that are in the hands of KCCA. We need to have better health centers. The hospitals yeah. that were constructed, unfortunately, were taken over by the central government. What? The Kirudus and what? Chiru there are three Chirudu, Kawempe, and Naguru. Naguru, which they turned into Uganda China Friendship Hospital. But right now, it's a, Kampala is a city we, where we don't have a single hospital. Because those three are hospitals. The rest are health centers, graded like those ones in the country. We can imagine the city. We still have health center threes. And these are the things we're talking about. You go to Komamboga. Komamboga is a health center three. Kawale has just been upgraded. 
Chiswa here probably the center for and the, and the okay. and, and and actually at KCCA headquarters. That one is a health center theory because we don't have even the basics you can talk about. All right. You see, but mm -hmm. but in that, can you imagine in all these hospitals we have, we don't even have a CT scan. The health centers I'm talking about, not even a CT scan. I was about to talk about one MRI, but it's just CT scan. It's not there. The one in Ichirudu, that is the National Referral Hospital. Even uh, that's where dialysis is done and all these other kind of things. But a city should be able to do this. So in this, uh, from the budget fund mm -hmm. of four billion, of course it is delayed in the consolidated fund. We are purchasing ten ambulances. Okay, ten ambulances to help us manage the, some of those emergencies. And also, uh, I presided over a meeting and we resolved we are going to buy a modern, uh, a mobile laboratory truck. Uh, you call it a mobile uh, 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 clinic, so that we uh, because we decided to do this in the fight against COVID, to do campaign vaccination, not health center based vaccination. Vaccination. All so right. we want these trucks to reach out to the communities, to the slum areas, to the congested like the market center, like the Nakasero where they park, like the way we collect the blood. So, Mr. so they come, ultimately they, we Mr. vaccinate Lord them, we test them. I can see the challenges are immense. There are so many. Quite a lot. That's why. Are you optimistic that Kampala will be redeemed? In in the long run, Kampala will have to revert to its pre-colonial no to its colonial status, colonial days status rather. In during colonial days, Kampala was a purely commercial city. The administrative city was Entebbe, and the industrial city was Jinja. That setup was distorted, was dismantled. All government offices relocated from Entebbe and uh, they are all here. Industries, they are just here now, they are all over here now. Industries, we should be in Nigeria. So now, that hodgepodge is not sustainable. All right. So we are pushing in the long run what is sustainable is for you people, those, uh, you who do not want street vendors to get to the administrative city. A person who does, doesn't want, in America, a person who doesn't want a noise will not go to New York. I know. You, you, go, you go to D.C., you go to Washington, <coughs> D.C., there you will have that quiet environment you want. But come to New York. No, don't, don't, don't say the examples are here. If you want a quiet and place and <laughs> clean and whatever, you can come to Fort Porto. <laughs> <laughs> but but Mr. Our city. <laughs> Mr. Lord, Mr. Lord Mayor, uh, I want to conclude on the with football. KCC Football Club used to be a serious club. Used to uh, be or is? Yes, yeah, you know, but <laughs> yeah, they, they, they could do much better. You know, they would take on no. Continental Giants with, uh, with some good results. We need KCC of the old. You are not informed. <laughs> KCC is a giant. It's a huge brand, uh, not only in Uganda here, but on the entire continent. Uganda see those of Sundown, Mamerodi, uh, Keiza Chiefs, wherever, these Zamalek. Have fallen along the... They will, no, they will all talk about, in Uganda you ask them, they will talk about KCCFC. It's only that uh, they are those who are envious of our record and pedigree, and of late we have suffered badly freeing. You witnessed what happened in Arua recently. Can you imagine, the, we, we were given a, a, a penalty, which for intents and purposes was... <laughs> okay. <laughs> and the Nduparakas wasn't okay. So Nduparakas well, Tom did a pitch. Let me let me let me, not, anyway, let me not get there. But but the point but is yes. the point is mm -hmm. and I want Magoga, oh, I'm sorry he's in Cameroon. But the, this message should be relayed to Fufa. We are facing badly freeing. In the case of M KCC versus Zimbalala, in the cases of, uh, and on Nduparaka, even in many of these other clubs where we have had to to, to, to tussle it out, to go uphill, to win these matches, we have not been treated fairly. All there right. is a deliberate move. FUFA take a note of this. There is a deliberate move that comes from within the FUFA to pull down KCCA. All right, KCCA Mr. But Mr. KCCA Lord, is Mr. Lord a Mayor, giant. What is going to be your concluding remark? Mine is an appeal to Ugandans. Let's focus our attention on the matter and the issues those matter the most, especially the need 
to plan for Kampala. Right now, we don't have a structural plan. Right. They need to inject in adequate funds. What we have is just peanuts. They need to create spaces for the urban poor. Right now, they are not there. They need to have systems of accountability so that we have value for money. In a nutshell, we need to, real, to walk the journey together of achieving a, a livable, sustainable, attractive, vibrant, and of course, resilient city. That right. journey cannot be, I mean, that dream cannot be realized single-handedly by the Lord Mayor, together with my Lord the Councillors and the Executive Director and the Directors, but with all of you. So we consider you as stakeholders in this, give ideas that can help us address this, instead of insulting and also just choosing us. I thank you very much. I wish you a blessed new year. Thank you so much, Mr. Lord Mayor Elias Lukwago, for your time, but most of all, for your insight. I also want to thank you who has been watching this program for a great company. Uganda, we have a great country and we are good people. I think if we put our minds together, we can move our country and our city to another hate. We know that there has been a, a great master plan for Kampala put together by reputable farms from Israel and South Africa. Sure. And so if, if we can only put it into practice, exactly. you, Kampala can be a better city. After all, God has placed us in one of the best spots on earth. So we have where to start from. Good night and God bless Uganda. <laughs>